okay so let's see functions the term function is uh, very common to uh, computer science students um, for example we uh, define functions like for example you have add function that uh, returns an integer and it takes two arguments int a comma int b and returns a plus b okay so this is an example of a function so if you see the function can take zero or more arguments right and it returns a single value this is important so we usually returns only a single value so this is type of functions are actually called single valued function so uh, by function we mean always single valued function unless otherwise it is uh, clearly mentioned that we are talking about multi valued functions uh, if you simply say functions we are actually interested in single valued function so uh, we can say that a function takes some arguments and produce some output right so if i say that uh, a function from set a to set b let me call that function as f1 so that means you have f1 then you give any value from a you will always get an output or or you can say that you give an element of a you can always determine the corresponding element from b right so let me draw like this so let's assume you have a function 1 2 3 4 and let's assume this is this is the set a and this is the set b and you have here a b c and we have a mapping this is a function okay so uh, one thing you should note that if i give uh, let's assume this function that is the add function add function if i give 2 comma 3 i will be always getting the answer as 5 right so for an input the output mapping is unique you will not have multiple outputs or it will not be mapped to multiple outputs so always the output will be a, a unique value so if you see uh, this take this function and if you give the 1 as the input output output will be a right so what i am saying is if i know the value in a or if someone gives me the value some value in a i can always determine the value in b that is what we call a function right so usually uh, we write y is equal to f of x this is a function because whenever we give the value of x we can always determine the value of y right so now let's see how many different functions are possible from a to b uh, assuming that a and b are finite sets so let me draw a that is uh, one two three four and here we have the set b let's assume we have a b c so i can map one to a two to a and three to b and four to c right so this is one way of mapping so let me call this as f1 and we can have for example one two three four and i can have a b c and i can say that one gives a two gives a three gives b and four gives b. right so this is another function that is f2 okay now how many different functions are possible if i have a is equal to length cardinality of a is equal to 4 and cardinality of b is equal to 3 okay, it's very clear that uh, for example i can draw different functions keeping uh, 1 to point to a or to b or to c right for this element i have got three choices similarly for 2 i have got three choices 3 also i have got three choices 4 also i have got three choices so total number of functions possible will be equal to 3 into 3 into 3 into 3 right that will be equal to 3 raised to 4 
right so i can say that the total number of functions possible will be equal to the cardinality of b raised to cardinality of a clear and also write the set of inputs for which we are applying to this function is called the domain domain and the right side the set b is usually known as codomain okay and it's not mandatory that you your codomain um, all elements are uh, mapped with the or is an image of um, some elements from a uh, for example if you see this function uh, you can see that a is an image of 1 and 2 a is also an image of 2 uh, similarly b is an image of 3 and 4 but c is not mapped so this is here the domain and this is the core domain right so the the elements which are actually image of some elements here we have a and b these are called range range okay so here the core domain and range are same because all the elements are mapped to at least one of the elements from a okay so it is possible that your range uh, value or the range contains less numbers than the core domain okay clear now let's see some problems find the number of single valued functions from set a to another set b given that the cardinalities of the set a and b are m and n respectively okay so we have a set a here and s cardinality is m and b's cardinality is n right so how many different functions are possible right so we have the cardinality of b is equal to n so that means the first element of sub element here can actually map to n different values right so n into second element also can be mapped to n different values so n third element also you can map right till the last element. so how many elements will be there you will have m elements so the answer should be n raised to m suppose x and y are sets and cardinality of x and cardinality of y are their respective cardinalities it is given that there are exactly 97 functions from x to y okay so it's given that we have functions from x to y right and the cardinality of x is represented as like this and cardinality of y is represented like this and we have the total number of functions as 97 right so we know that the total number of functions should be equal to the cardinality of y raised to cardinality of x right now if you see the choices uh, it's clear that choice c is wrong and if you see the choice b b is wrong because we have x is equal to 97 and y is equal to 1 so 1 raised to 97 will be 1 so choice b is wrong and if you see the choice a said x is equal to 1 y is equal to 97 so that will be 97 raised to 1 that will be equal to 97 okay so uh, we know that this value actually evaluates if we have x is equal to 1 and y is equal to 97 then we know that we have 97 functions right but the question is can we conclude that that means is it possible that you have some other value for x maybe let me call it a small x and some other value for y let me call that as small y then is it possible that uh, you can get y raised to x is equal to 97 okay is it is it possible to have some different value other than 1 and 97 if you can have only 1 and 97 then you can conclude right otherwise you cannot conclude but if you see the number 97 it's a prime number and you know the prime number cannot be factorized so that means you cannot have any other y and x apart from x is equal to 1 and y is equal to 97 right so the answer should be a so this is a gate uh, 1998 question and you can you can see that the question is again uh, repeated 
So the number of functions from an M element set. So we have M elements here and to an N element set. So we have N elements here. So are uh, the different number of functions possible should be equal to N raised to M, right? So we know the answer should be C. Let F is a function from set A to B. E and F are subsets of A. Now consider the following two statements about the images. Now we have to find the choices which are correct. So maybe we'll see uh, an example. See what this expression means. So let's assume you have A and B. And let's assume you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 here. And you have A, B, C or maybe D here. And let's assume the mapping is straightforward. Maybe like this. Okay. Now it says that E and F can be any subsets of A. So I can have E is equal to uh, maybe 1, 2. And F is equal to, I can uh, take distinct or I can actually uh, have some elements from E also, right? Because there is no condition between E and F. It said that E and F must be subsets of A, right? So I can have F is equal to 1, 3, okay? Now, F of E union F, right? So first we had to find out E union F. E union F will be 1, 2, 3, right? Now we are saying, uh, what is F of E union F, right? That means you can, you have to give 1, 2 and 3 and the output will be equal to f of e so what is f of e f of e f of e is nothing but you give one you will get a and you give two you are getting b right that is this is f of e and f of capital f is equal to so you have one that is mapped to a and you have three that is mapped to c Right, right now, what is f of e union f of f? f of e union f of f will be equal to a, b, c. Right, and what is f of 1, 2, 3? Well, f of 1, 2, 3 will be 1 is mapped to a, and 2 is mapped to b, 3 is mapped to c. Right, so the first choice says these two are actually same and Second choice says uh, instead of union you take intersection, then uh, then also this choice is true, right? So uh, this is the meaning of this. So now let's see how can we prove this. So the first choice says f of e union f will be the set of elements x, right? Such that x is an element of B. X should be an element of B. And and x is nothing but f of y, right? So you whatever element you are getting will be from b, and also uh, you give an image of f. That value should be there, right? And what is y? Y will be an element of e union f, right? Y should be an element of E union F. So we can rewrite this as X such that X is an element of B and X is equal to F of Y and Y is an element of E or Y is an element of F. Right? Y is an element of E or Y is an element of F. Right, so that means x is an element of x element. Sorry, x such that x is an element of b, and x is equal to f of y, and y is an element of e. Or I can write like this, right? Or the same thing. X is an element of x. Sorry, x such that x is an element of b, and x is equal to f of y and y is an element of f right 
what is this one this is f of e and this is f of f right so we have or here so that means it should be equal to f of e union f of f okay so the first statement is true now let's see the second statement second statement will be here instead of union it will be intersection uh, we cannot write like this because we have intersection here right now let's see uh, whether uh, the statement is correct for example let's take a and b okay and let's assume you have one two three four here and you have a b c here okay now let's assume one is mapped to a two is mapped to b and three is mapped to b and four is mapped to c so uh, let's take your e is equal to one two and f is equal to three four okay now what is e intersection f e intersection f is five right so f of phi will be equal to phi right so we are getting phi here now if you see f of e f of e is having a comma b and f of s is having b comma c and if you have f of e intersection f of f then you will be having b right so uh, what we can really say is f of E intersection F should be less than or equal to F of E intersection F of F. Sorry, the cardinality of F of E intersection F should be less than or equal to the cardinality of F of E intersection F of F. So, this is the correct relation. We cannot say that it should be equal, right? The elements will be equal. So, the choice S2 is wrong only s1 is correct so the option is a so let's spend some time understanding this question we have s is equal to 1 2 3 etc m x1 x2 etc xn the subsets of s each of size okay we need to find out the value of n that is the number of subsets with size 3 so the n the value of n will be equal to we have m elements right so we have to take exactly three elements to form a subset of size 3 so n should be equal to m c 3 okay so we have this many subsets of size 3 right now we are defining a function f from s to the set of natural numbers as f of i is the number of sets x j that contain the element i okay uh, for example um, if you have s is equal to 1 2 3 4 okay and and maybe the number of subsets with size 3 will be equal to uh, 1 2 3 right then uh, 1 3 4 then uh, you may have 1 2 4 right then 2 3 4 right and f of i for example if i take f of 1 is the number of subsets that contains 1 so if you see i have um, 3 as the answer because these three sets contains 1 okay so f of 1 is 3 similarly if you see here f of 2 that is also equal to uh, 3 here and f of 3 that is also equal to 3 and f of 4 that is also equal to 3 okay so uh, ideally if you see this uh, it is clear that uh, all this f of i is going to evaluate to the same value right so uh, if in this example itself if you see in this example i have m is equal to 4 and n is also equal to 4 right m is equal to 4 and n is equal to 4 and we had to find out this function right so we had to add all this f of i's right so i'm i'll be getting 12 so uh, when m is equal to 4 and n is equal to 4 
n is the number of subsets with size 3, right? So we are getting the answer as 12. Uh, so we know that this 2m plus 1 and 2n plus 1, right? Uh, these choices are anyway wrong. So the answer should be either A or B. Uh, let's see. Uh, now at least we know uh, what this um, what we had to compute, right? So let's see how can we do it more generally. So what we know till now is n is equal to m c three, right? That is the number of subsets with size three. Now uh, let me uh, see how can I compute f of one if I have m elements so s is equal to 1 2 3 up to m elements right so how can i compute f of 1 f of 1 is the number of subsets that contains 1 right so i am going to construct that uh, number of subsets x is equal to so i am going to write all the subsets here so remember i need to have 1 here right then only uh, that can be added to f of 1 so all the subsets that I am uh, interested for f of 1 should contain 1, right? All the subsets should contain 1. Now I can fill the remaining two values here, right? So I can take any two values from here. I cannot take 1 because I already kept 1 here. And my set size should be 3. So I can actually from the remaining m minus m minus 1 elements, I had to take exactly two elements, right? So the value of f of 1 will be equal to m minus 1 c 2, right? The value of f of 1 should be m, 1, m minus 1 c 2. Similarly, the value of f of 2 should be equal to m minus 1 c 2, right? So all these values f of 3 should be equal to m minus 1 c 2, right? Now if I add all these things, I have m values, right? f of 1 to f of m, right? So the total summation will be summation will be equal to m into m minus one c two, right? So that will be equal to m into m minus one factorial divided by m minus one minus two, right? So that will be m minus three factorial into right so that's equal to m factorial divided by m minus 3 factorial into 2 right so what we know is n is equal to mc3 so n is equal to m factorial divided by m minus 3 factorial into 2 into Right? So from this, I can say that 3n should be equal to m factorial divided by m minus 3 factorial into 2. Right? So if you see m factorial divided by m minus 3 factorial into 2, that is what uh, we have here m factorial by m minus 3 factorial into 2. So that should be equal to 3n. Right? So the answer should be 3n. Let x comma y comma z be the sets of sizes small x, small y and small z. Let w is equal to x cross y. Right? We had to find the cross product of x and y. Right? So the number of elements in w will be the number of elements in x that is small x into number of elements in y that is small y. Right, so we know that the number of elements in W will be equal to x into y. Capital E be the set of all subsets of W. Right, so capital E is the set of all subsets of W. So the cardinality of E will be equal to 2 raised to x into y. Right, the cardinality of E will be equal to it contains all the subsets of W, right? So, cardinality of E will be equal to 2 raised to x into y. Now, the number of functions from z to e, from z to e, this is the question, right? So, we know that the cardinality of z, z 
is small z right and the cardinality of e that is equal to 2 raised to x y right so the number of functions will be equal to the cardinality of e raised to cardinality of z sorry cardinality of e raised to cardinality of z right so that should be equal to 2 raised to x y all raised to z right and that should be equal to 2 raised to x y z so the answer should be d what is the maximum number of different boolean functions involving n boolean variables okay so uh, let's assume you have two boolean variables uh, maybe x and y okay and let's assume you have a function maybe we can take x or y that's a function so you give a pair of inputs right x comma y right and what are the different combinations you can give here you can give here 0 0 and the output will be 0 you can give 0 1 the output will be 1 you can give 1 0 the output will be 1 if you give 1 1 the output will be 1 right so basically it's a mapping of pairs 0 0 0 1 1 0 1 1 to 0 comma 1 right so 0 0 is mapped to 0 0 1 is mapped to 1 1 0 is mapped to 1 and 1 1 is mapped to 1 right so this is a so this is a function uh, let me call this as f1 so like this how many functions are possible right so we know that we have two elements here and we have four elements here so we can have two raised to four right now if you see uh, you have three boolean variables so the left hand side will have all the combinations with three variables right so it will be 0 0 0 2 1 1 1 and right side always you will have only 0 and 1 right so left side if you have n variables then the left side you will have 2 raised to n elements and the right side you will have 2 elements so the dot number of functions possible will be equal to 2 raised to 2 raised to n right so the answer should be c if g of x is equal to 1 minus x and h of x is equal to x by x minus 1 so we have to calculate g of h of x divided by h of g of x right so what is g of h of x g of h of x that means you have function g right this is g and your input is h of x right so what is function g that is 1 minus x and what is h of x that is x by x minus 1 so what will be the output give this as the input output will be 1 minus instead of x you have to give this right 1 minus x by x minus 1 so that will be equal to x minus 1 minus x divided by x minus 1 right so that will be equal to minus 1 by x minus 1 right or that's equal to 1 by 1 minus x now what is h of g of x h of g of x is again you have h of x right and what is h of x that is x by x minus 1 and the input you are giving g of x now what is g of x that is 1 minus x now what h of x will do the output of h of x will be instead of x you replace with 1 minus x right so that will be 1 minus x divided by 1 minus x minus 1 that will be equal to 1 minus x divided by minus x right so you can write it as x minus 1 by x right now what is g of h of x divided by h of g of x so you have to divide 1 by 1 minus x divided by x minus 1 
by x right that will be equal to 1 by 1 minus x into x by x minus 1 right we know that x by x minus 1 is nothing but h of x right so that's equal to h of x divided into sorry h of x into 1 by 1 minus x we that we know that 1 minus x is equal to g of x so we get h of x into 1 by g of x right that's equal to h of x divided by g of x so the answer should be a s denote the set of all functions f of the form 0 1 all raised to 4 to 0 comma 1 so we need to see what is s so at s is set of functions f1 f2 etc fn of the form what is 0 1 all raised to 4 that is equal to 0 comma 1 one guide to 0 comma 1 one guide to 0 comma 1 one guide to 0 comma 1 okay and that will be equal to set of all binary strings of of length 4 okay so f is a function that actually uh, takes binary all binary numbers that can take all binary numbers of length 4 right so you will have uh, 2 raised to 4 elements in the domain and in the range you will have only 0 and 1 right so that is the property of this function so how many total functions are possible you have 2 elements here and you have 2 raised to 4 elements here so totally 2 raised to 2 raised to 4 functions are possible so s is a set and the cardinality of s is equal to 2 raised to 2 raised to 4. Now, capital N is the number of functions from s to the set 0, 1. So, what is capital N? It is the number of functions from s. S has now 2 raised to 2 raised to 4 elements. And you have a mapping to 0, 1. And the number of different mappings is actually called the capital N, that is the number of different functions. So that will be equal to, so you have two elements here, that should be equal to 2 raised to 2 raised to 2 raised to 4. Right? Now, the question is, what is the value of log log N? So, what is the value of log log 2 raised to 2 raised to? 2 raised to 4. Right? That will be equal to 2 raised to 4 and that will be equal to 16. So the answer here should be 16. So it's given that we have 4 distinct integers and we have 3 functions. Okay? And it's also given that uh, it's not mandatory that you need to have 4 arguments in the function. Say It says that Operations are valid with two variable functions of the form f of p comma q. So even the functions are valid with two variables. Okay. Now we have to compute the value of this one. Right. So first we have to compute uh, from this expression. We know that we have to compute h of two comma five comma seven comma three. So basically we have to compute this function. So the value of this function will be equal to the remainder of p into q divided by r into s if p into q is greater than r into s if you see p into q is 10 it is not greater than 7 into 3 right so we have to find out if r into s is greater than p into q then we have to find out r into s divided by p into q right so what is r into s that is 21 divided by p into q that is actually 10 Right, so the remainder will be 1. Right, so h of 2, 5, 7, 3 is going to return remainder 1. Right, so let's see the function again. We have now f g 1, 4, 6, 8. Right, now it is also defined that 
if you have fgh of pqrs that means f of pqrs into g of pqrs into h of pqrs right it is also valid of the form of two variables so that means this is equal to f of 1468 into g of 1468 right now what is f of 1468 f of 1468 is the maximum right maximum that is now what is g of 1468 g of 1468 is the minimum of those values right so that will be equal to 1 so if you multiply that that we should be getting 8 so the answer to this question should be 8 a function set of positive numbers to positive numbers satisfies the following properties f of n is equal to f of n by 2 if n is even and f of n is equal to f of n plus 5 if n is odd and it's given that set r is the set of values i such that there exists a j that f of j is equal to i so uh, r is the set for example if you pass let's assume f of 1 is equal to x f of 1 if you pass f of 1 and the value is x then x will be here so that is the definition right so it is a set of values i such that there exists a j f of j is equal to i so for example if i have f of 1 is equal to x then x should be here uh, maybe for example if f of 2 is equal to y then y should be here if f of 3 is equal to z then z should be here and if f of 4 is equal to maybe again you may get x so you don't need to include because it's a set okay now the set of distinct values that f takes so uh, that means uh, r is a set of distinct values that f takes because r is a set um, we know that set will not have repeat elements right then the maximum possible size of r that is what we had to find out the maximum possible size of r okay so uh, let's start with f of 1 so f of 1 according to this definition if n is odd then we will be calling f of n plus 5 right so this should be f of 6 and if f is even then we will be calling f of n by 2 right so that we will be calling f of 3 then again um, 3 is odd so we will be calling f of 3 plus 5 that is f of 8 right then 8 is even so we will be calling f of 4 right then 4 is even we will be calling f of 2 then 2 is even then we will be calling f of 1 right 1 is odd then we should be calling again f of 6 so this is going in an infinite loop but uh, you know this is actually a recursion so definitely there should be a base case right otherwise it will go on infinite loop so uh, they should have mentioned the base case but let's assume uh, the uh, there is a base case so uh, let's assume we stop when uh, we are having n is equal to 1 okay so uh, that means f of 1 will be stopping right so f of 1 let's assume it returns a value x okay so we are stopping when uh, f of when we reach f of 1 okay so f of 1 is x so r will have x then f of 2 is actually equal to f of 1 so f of 2 also will have x uh, f of 3 is also equal to f of 1 right so f of 3 also will be having x and f of 4 also will be having x now if you see f of 5 f of 5 is an odd number so we will be having f of 10 right then it's an even number so we will divide by 5 so if you see this is actually a, again a loop right so there should be a base condition here also so let me uh, assume f of 5 is equal to y okay so i got another number that is that is y okay now if you see f of 6 
f of 6 is equal to f of 3 and we know that f of 3 is equal to x. Now if you see f of 7, f of 7 is equal to f of 12, right? f of 12 is equal to f of 6 and f of 6 is x. Then if you see f of 8, that should be, uh, it's already here, f of 8 is f of 1, right? So that should be x. Now f of 9, that should be f of 14, right? That should be equal to f of 7 and f of 7 is equal to x, right? So that should be x. Now if you see f of 10, f of 10 will be equal to f of 5 and we know that f of 5 is equal to y, right? So if you continue like this, okay, you can see that if the number is a multiple of 5, then we will be getting the answer as y. If it is not a multiple of y, sorry, it's, if it's not a multiple of 5, then it, actually the value will be x. So we will have only two values. Okay. So uh, let's spend some more time on this to understand what really is happening. So one thing we should understand that if a number, for example, n, uh, if it is divisible by 5, then n plus 5 is also divisible by 5. Right? Is also divisible by 5. If n is divisible by 5, then n plus 5 is also divisible by 5. Right? And also, if n mod 5 is the remainder 0, and let's assume n is an even number, then n by 2, if you take n by 2, that also will be uh, divisible by 5 if n is an even number. Okay? So, these two properties we know. Okay? Now, if you see this, uh, I can write it as a function. For example, I can say that um, divisibility, divisibility by 5 and you take some, uh, let's assume you take some number n and let's assume it's going to return some integer or, or even you can say that you want to return a boolean, then what you can do is you can say if n is equal to 1, turn false, right, else if n is equal to 5, return true, else if n is even, return, turn divisibility by 5 of n by 2 because we know that uh, what we are interested in is whether it is a divisible by 5. So if it's an even number, we can actually divide it by 2, still it will be even number, right? Uh, else we know that it is an odd number. So we can return return uh, divisibility by 5 of n plus 5 because we know that n is odd, then I add 5, the remainder is not going to change if n is divisible by 5. And also I know that this will make the value of n to even, right? Because n is already odd and I am adding an odd number. So this value will be even, right? So uh, if you see this function, this function basically returns 0 and 1, basically checking whether the given number is divisible by 5 or not. So this is uh, also one method of actually checking whether the number is divisible by 5 uh, without doing mod 5 operation. Right, one to one functions or injective functions. Okay, so we know that if let's assume you have a domain with three elements and you have the con domain with five. Okay, so if you can see that A can be mapped to uh, any of the five elements, right? And if you see B, uh, B is, A is already mapped to one element. So the remaining four elements you can map to B. Right? Now uh, the mapping of A and B are over. Now you have C and remaining you have three elements. So C can be mapped to three elements. So total we have 5 into 4 into 3. Right? So we are getting 5 into 4 into 3. And uh, it is actually equal to 5P3. Right, so what is 5p3? That equal to 5 factorial divided by 
2 factorial, right? That is equal to 3 into 4 into 5, right? So if you have n elements here and you have m elements here, right? Then the number of 1 to 1 functions will be equal to m, p, n, right? That will be equal to m factorial divided by m minus n factorial. Okay. We can also see this uh, in different way. For example, uh, I have uh, three elements here and I want to map the three elements to five elements. So, out of these five elements, I can, uh, I have to select exactly three elements that I can do in five, three, three ways, right? Now, uh, once I selected that um, three elements, I can actually rearrange them in whatever order I want, right? So, that can be done in three factorial ways. Right, so 5 uh, C3 into 3 factorial will be equal to 5 P3, right? Or, or you can say that you have n elements here and m elements here, so you have to select exactly n elements from n elements and then you can uh, rearrange those n elements that can be done in n factorial ways. So, what is MCN that is equal to m factorial divided by m minus n factorial into n factorial that is mcn into n factorial right so this n factorial and this n factorial will get cancelled out so what we get is m p n right now let's see how can we count one to one correspondence or bijunction so one property of bijunction is we will have uh, four elements here that means here also you'll have four elements, right so if you have n elements here, here also you will have n. Okay. Now the first element can be mapped to any of the element in B. So you have four elements in both places, right? So for A, you can actually map to four, and for B, you can actually map to remaining three elements, and for C, you can map to remaining two elements, and for D, you have only one choice, right? So uh, that will be equal to four into 3 into 2 into 1 that is equal to 4 factorial. Right? So, uh, what we are saying is if you have n elements here, n elements here, and you have n elements here, so the first element can be mapped to any of the elements here. So, the first element got n choices. So, it is mapped to one of the elements. Right? Uh, the second element can map to remaining n minus 1 elements. So, the second has got choice of n minus 1 and the third will have choice of n minus 2 uh, like that you will have up to 1, right? That is equal to n factorial. If you have n elements, then the number of 1 to 1 correspondence function will be equal to n factorial. Now, let us count the onto or subjective functions. So, for example, if you have a set A, let us assume it's has 1, 2, 3, and 4, and you have a set B, that is the codomain. So let's assume it has A, B, C. Okay. So as far as the onto function is concerned, you need to have every element here in B should be an image of an element in A, right? So maybe I will map like this. So this is a onto function, right? Now uh, let's see, uh, let me uh, rewrite here that shows that A is an image of 1, 2, right? Similarly, B is an image of 3 and C is an image of 4, right? So, let me draw another function, A, B with same elements, 1, 2, 3, 4, A, B, C, and let me draw like this. Okay, so we can see that A is mapped to 1, right, and B is mapped to 2, 3, and C is mapped to 4. Now, uh, from this example, I can understand one thing that uh, an onto function partitions the set A into, uh, for example, if you have three elements here and four elements here, it's 
So that means this four element set in, is partitioned into three sets. Right? You see, you have three sets here. One is one, two, another is three, and another is four. Right? So it's a it's called a partition. The properties of property of partition is that every uh, set should not be empty. And if you take the union of these all the sets, you should be getting the original set. And if you take intersection of any set, you should be getting five. Right? So here also it's, it shows that uh, you have a partition here. Right? So uh, one thing now we know that every partition, every partition of a set presents an onto onto function. Also, uh, we will take one partition. Now, I'm not going to change this partition. So, we have the partition 1, 2, 3, and 4. Right? I am keeping this partition same. Now, uh, I can say that let me map A to 3 and B to 1, 2 and C to 4. Now, if you see, this is the same partition. Right? But this represents a different onto function. See here I have A and here I have B. A is 1, 2, 3, 4. And B is A, B, C. Right? So A is mapped to 3. Right? B is mapped to 1 and 2. And C is image of 4. Right? You see, this is another onto function. Okay, so keeping one partition itself, I can create different onto functions. So how many such onto functions are possible? If I am saying that the partition should be always this one, right? Basically, uh, I had to just uh, permute this uh, sets, right? For example, I can say that okay, a is three and uh, b is four and c is one two. Right? Or, or I can say that uh, A is 4 and B is 1, comma 2 and C is 3. Right? So how many ways I can actually permute this? That will be the number of sets. Here I have number of sets is equal to 3. Right? So in three factorial ways I can permute this. Right? So given a partition. Given a partition, remember what I am saying. Given a partition, okay, you can actually again create using that partition, you can create three factorial different onto functions. So, you can how many such partitions are possible that we will find out, okay. Uh, but given a partition, we can always find out three factorial different onto functions if the size of the P is 3. Now, for a general case. So let's assume you have m elements here and you have n elements here. So what I know is an onto function is going to partition m into n sets. Right? So here I will have n sets. Okay. So given a partition, given a partition, I can actually rearrange them in n factorial ways. So number of onto functions. From from A to B, where the cardinality of A is equal to M and the cardinality of B is equal to N, will be equal to N factorial int. Number of ways, number of ways, number of ways you can. Partition the set of size M to N sets. Right? So let's assume uh, we use a notation, for example, S of M, comma N to represent the number of ways you can partition a set of size M into N partitions. Okay? So, the 
equation will be equal to n factorial into s of m comma n. Okay, now we had to find out what is this s of m comma n. So let's assume you have a set A is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, so if I am asking you to find out s of 4, 1, the answer will be 1. You have a four element set and you need to have only one partition. That partition will be equal to 1, 2, 3, 4. So s of 4, 1 is equal to 1. Now, what about s of 4, comma? So s of 4, comma 2 will be equal to. So you have a is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, right? And you want to partition this into two sets, right? So that means uh, you can uh, keep any subset here except pi or the complete set, right? For example, I can keep here 1, comma 2. Right, so the remaining elements should be here. So basically, I can keep any subset here except pi. Pi is not allowed, right? And I cannot keep entire elements here. That is one, two, three, four. That is not allowed because the other side will be five, right? So uh, basically, I can keep any subsets here except phi or one, two, three, four. How many subsets are possible? If you have four elements, then you can have two raised to four subsets, right? In that, two subsets are not allowed. So two raised to four minus, right? Now, if you see a partition like this, for example, I can have one here and two, three, four here, right? Or I can have two, three, four here and one here. See, if you see, these two partitions are actually same. You are just partitioning in two sets. One contained one and another contained two, three, four. So that means we are actually all counting. We are counting every uh, possibility twice, right? So basically, uh, you have to divide this by two, right? You have to divide this by two. So you will be getting uh, two raised to four minus one, minus one, right? So you, if you are uh, going for a generalized formula, S of uh, m comma two will be equal to be equal to 2 raised to m minus 1 minus 1, right? So we know that we will have 7 such partitions, right? S of 4, 2 will be 7 such partitions. Anyway, uh, let me write those partitions. So I'm going to write S of 4, 2. I'm going to write all the partitions. So I will have 1, 2, 3, 4. Then I will have 2, 1, 3, 4. I will have 3, 1, 2, 4. Then 4, 1, 2, 3. Then 1, 2, 3, 4, 2, 3. And one four. One three. Okay. So these are the uh, seven partitions, basically seven different partitions of a set of four elements into two sets. Right? Now uh, let me write uh, what will be S of S of three comma. Okay. So S of 3 comma 2 will have 2 raised to 2 minus 1 elements. Right? So it will have 3 elements. I think it should be easy to write. Right? So let's assume you have only 1, 2, 3. Right? So you want to partition this into 2. Right? So you can have 1, then 2, 3. And you can have 2, 1, 3, 3, 1, 2. Right? So these are the uh, three partitions that is possible. So S of 3, 2 is equal to 3 and S of 4, 2 is equal to 7 that we know. Or let me uh, compute one more thing that is S of 3, 1. Okay, S of 3, 1 will be equal to 1. 
first you have three elements and you want just partitioning into one right so let me write that partition here that will be one two okay so we have computer what is s of three two and what is s of three one okay now uh using this information is it possible to compute s of four comma s of four comma okay uh, now listen here um if you see this partition uh, you have two partitions but you have only three elements right so uh, all your so 4 to uh, partitions should have four elements right so that means if you see all the partitions here i can add four into this portion or i can add four to this portion right till it will be having two partitions so if i add to this portion it will be one four two three that is here right if i add four to here that will be one two three four that will be one two three four right now if you see this portion right that is actually uh two here and one three in the right side so i can add four here or for this side if i add four here that will be two four one three that is here Right, if I add 4 here, that will be 2, 1, 3, 4, 2, 1, 3. Similarly, if I add 4 here, that will be uh, 3, 4, 1, 2. Right, if I add 4 here, that will be 3, 1, 2, 4. So we got all these boxed uh, partitions just by adding 4 to uh, one of these partitions. Right, you got it right. So uh, then, uh, if you see a soft 3, 1, here I am saying I have three elements and I have only one partition. I have only one partition here, right? So basically I need two partitions, right? And I have one more element. So what I can do is I can just add four here. Then it will have two partitions, right? That is this set. For clear? Now listen. Now the recurrence solution. S of m comma n will be equal to n into so of m minus 1 comma n plus s of m minus 1 n minus 1 okay so this will be the recurrence solution now we'll see uh, the mapping of this recurrence solution here so what it says is that if you want to find n partitions of a set of size m then first you find m minus 1 element into n partitions that will be equal to here right so you will have n partitions right n partitions like this okay so you will have all the partition size will be n and totally you will have s of m minus 1 comma n right now you are adding one more element so you can you have got choice of adding it here or you have got adding it here or you can add it here right so you have n options of adding because you have n sets here right so uh, then it will become the set size if i add one element here then set set size will be will become m so i can say n into s minus 1 comma n that will cover all the uh, type whatever we discussed first then uh, the remaining that is uh, m minus 1 elements into n minus 1 sets Okay, so here you will have the partition size will be n minus 1 and you have m minus 1 element, right? So you will have a lot of such partitions, right? And total number of partitions will be equal to of m minus 1, comma, n minus 1. So the if you want to add one more element, you can add it in the right side, right? So I have to count all the sets and I have to count all the sets into n because I have n choices of keeping that last element. So uh, this will be the recurrence relation to find out the number of uh, n partitions of a set of size m that will be equal to n into s of m minus 1 n plus s of m minus 1 comma n minus 1. Okay. So the number of onto functions will be number of onto functions will be equal to n factorial 
uh, let's assume you have set A and set B and the size of A is M and size of B is N, then the number of onto functions will be equal to N factorial into S of M comma N, where S of M comma N will be equal to N into S of M minus 1 N plus S of M minus 1 N minus 1. This will be the number of one to functions. How many one to one functions are there from set A with n elements into itself? Right? So you have A here that has got n elements, and you have set B here that also got same n elements. Right? So what is a one to one function? One to one function. Every element here got a distinct image in B, right? For example, if you map one to one, then none of these elements, none of these elements can be mapped to one, right? So for the first element, you have got n choices, and second element you got n minus one, third element you have got n minus two, right? And the fourth one you have got n minus three. And up to one that will be equal to n factorial, right? So uh, the answer should be n factorial, or you can uh, also think like this. So uh, let's assume you have m elements here, and you have n elements here. So out of this n elements, you can choose m elements in n c m ways, right? Then actually you can uh, rearrange this in m factorial ways. Right, so we get that is equal to n factorial divided by n minus m factorial into m factorial. Right, in top also you have in numerator also you have m, m factorial. So if you cancel this out, you will get n p m. Right, here uh, both are same. Right, n and m are same. So you can write it as n p n. That's equal to n factorial divided by n minus n factorial n minus n factorial is 0 factorial that is 1 the answer will be n factorial let a and b be sets with cardinalities m and n respectively right so a has got m elements right and b has got n elements right we are defining functions from a to b Question is how many one to one mappings? Mappings means function, right? So, how many one to one functions are possible from A to B, right? It's given that M is less than N. So, that ideally, it should be uh, M should be basically less than or equal to N, right? That is a uh, usual um, condition for one to one mapping, right? So, the answer should be you can select. M elements from here that can be done in N C M ways, right? Into M factorial, right? So that's equal to N P M, right? N P M. So the answer should be P. Let X and Y denote the set containing two and twenty distinct objects. So we have X, which contains two elements. And we have y, which contains 20 elements, right? So we want to find the probability of f being 1 to 1, right? So the probability will be equal to favorable cases by total cases, right? So uh, total number of 1 to 1, 1 to 1 functions divided by odd number of functions right so our total number of functions will be equal to we have two elements here all uh, elements here has got 20 choices right so that will be equal to 20 into 20 and number of 
one to one functions one to one functions will be equal to first element you can map to you know 20 elements second element you can map to only 90 elements right so that will be equal to 20 into 90 so the number of one to one uh, functions is 20 into 90 divided by number of functions that will be 20 into 20 right so we are getting 19 by 20 that is equal to 0 0.95 the number of on two functions from set x to set y that is what we need to compute right so we have x here and x has got four elements similarly y got three elements right and we need to find the number of onto functions from x to y right x to y so if you have m elements here and n elements here the general formula to compute the number of onto functions is n factorial into s of m comma n right what is s of m comma n s of m comma n is equal to n into s of m minus 1 n plus s of m minus 1 n minus 1 right this is the way we compute s of m comma n so now here we have m is equal to 4 and n is equal to 3 right so s of 4 comma 3 will be equal to 3 into s of 3 comma 3 plus s of 3 comma 2 right now 3 into s of 3 comma 3 is 1 s of 3 comma 2 that will be equal to 2 raised to 3 minus 1 minus 1 right so that is equal to 3 plus 3 right and that is equal to 6 so the total number of onto functions will be equal to n factorial into 6 n factor is 3 n is 3 here so that should be equal to 3 factorial into 6 that should be equal to 36 okay now uh, let's see what is inverse function and composition of functions let's start with inverse function so we know that function is a map mapping from a domain to a coordinate right so for example you have set a here and set b here okay and let's assume you have one two three four and here you have a b c d okay and one is mapped to b two is mapped to a three is mapped to d and four is mapped to c okay so um, this is a function right so if you have a function you give an input from the domain that is from the set a you give an input here and you will be able to get an output that will be an element in b right this is a function right so given an element in set a you should be always able to find the element in b right uh, maybe i can give you an example uh, let's assume the function f of x is equal to 2x minus 7 Okay, or, or I can write it as y is equal to 2x minus 7. That means you give a value of x, you will get a value of y. Right? You give a value for x, you will get a value for y. Right? So that means given the value of x, you can always determine the value of y. Right? So uh, let me take this function that is f of x is equal to uh, 2x minus 7. And if I give the value here, uh, maybe 5, okay, then the answer will be 3, right? Because 2 into 5 is 10, 10 minus 7 is 3. So if I give the input 5, the output will be 3, right? Now my question is, if I give the uh, input as 3, can I get, get the value 5 back? Okay, so uh, now we are thinking that can, if we know the value in the core domain, can we get the value in the uh, domain? And that function is called 
the inverse function okay uh, for example if you here if you have you know y is equal to x minus 7 now if you give the value of y you need to find the value of x right so you can rewrite this as um 2x is equal to y plus 7 and x is equal to y plus 7 divided by 2 right so if you have a function x is equal to y plus 7 by 2 then if you give the value 3 that is the value of y now the value of x will be 5 right so this function this function is an inverse of this function okay that's that's the meaning of inverse function now if you want to represent it diagrammatically that is also very simple um instead of a you will have b here and instead of b you will have a here so b has got a b c d and here you have one two three four right now you have if you see a is an, actually an image of two so you uh, draw from a to two similarly b is an image of one so you draw b to one c is an image of four that means you can draw from c to four and d is an image of three so d to two. Okay. so this is if this is f this function we usually represent it as f inverse this will be the inverse function of f clear what is inverse function uh, so now one more thing that um, if, if, if for a function the inverse function x is only if the function is actually a one to one correspondence okay because if you uh, if you do, do not have a, a, an element here that is not an image in a then you cannot have f inverse fu function similarly um, if multiple elements here are mapped to uh, same element then also you will not have the inverse function so to have an inverse function uh, this function should be on to as well as one to one okay so that's what we call one to one correspondence right now let's see the composition of functions if you have two functions f and g then you can pass uh, for example g of x if you see that means you can pass the va value x and produces some more that is a function right so instead of x you can even pass a function that is f of x okay then this is called the composition of function so uh, here the function g is actually taking the function f of x okay so uh, we usually write this as g composition f uh, you should understand that g composition f is nothing but you are taking uh, the function g uh, the function f as the input of g okay uh, now um how can we represent this in diagrammatically uh, for example f is a function from a to b a to b a and you have b here and let me uh, write this as one two three and here let's assume you have a b c so let's assume this is the mapping you have got okay so this is the function f so uh, g will be uh, a function from b to c for example it's a function from b to c and let me have some elements here uh, maybe x y z then let's assume uh, there's a mapping like this okay now uh, let's assume you are going to talk about a function from a to c see uh, what uh, if you have a functions two functions like this what it means is that if i can give a value in a you can actually determine the corresponding value in c right because one is mapped to b and b is mapped to x so i can say that one is mapped to x right 
So um, if I write G composition F, that will be equal to G composition F will be equal to. So you have A here, that is 1, 2, 3. And you have C here, that is X, Y, Z. Now what is G composition F? That is G of F of X, right? So if you give 1, F of 1 will be B, right? And G of B will be X. So I can say that 1 is mapped to X. Right? If I give uh, 1 as the input of X, then the output will be B. Sorry, the output will be X, right? If I give uh, 2 as the input here, then, then the output will be Y, right? Because 2 is mapped to A and A is mapped to Y. So I can say that 2, if I give 2, I will be getting the answer as Y. Similarly, if I give 3, I will be getting the answer as Z. Okay, so this is G composition F. Okay, uh, also you can uh, represent this, for example, let's assume you have F of X is equal to uh, 2X plus 3 and uh, that is the function f of x and g of x is the function uh, 2 uh, x plus 5. Let's just see. Okay, so you have two functions. Then what is g of f of x? So f of x, you give x, it is going to return 2x plus 3. So that will be equal to g of 2x plus 3. What is g of 2x plus 3? Instead of x, you have to give 2x plus 3. Right? The answer will be. 2 into x is 2x plus 3, right? 2x plus 3 plus 5, and that will be equal to 4x plus 11, right? 4x plus 11. You got it? Now it, it can be represented like this, okay? So you have x, you are giving x, and you have f of x, f of x. So the output will be 2x plus 3. And you are giving this output to g of x. What is g of x? g of x is 2x plus 5. You are giving input as 2x plus 3. So the output will be 4x plus 11. Okay. So this is uh, a composition of functions. Uh, now let's see uh, the composition of functions and the inverse function, the relation between the composition of functions and uh, inverse function. So we have function f and we have function f inverse that is the inverse of f right now let's see what is f composition f inverse f composition f inverse okay so uh, let me draw some function that is f from a to b right so you have one two three four here and a b c d here Let's assume 1 is mapped to A, 2 is mapped to C, 3 is mapped to B, and 4 is mapped to D. Right? And then F inverse, F inverse will be a relation from B to A. So let me write it here, B to A. Okay? So that will be, here I will have 1, 2, 3, 4. Right? Now, A will be mapped to 1, that is the inverse. B will be mapped to 3, right? And um, C will be mapped to 2, and D will be mapped to 4. Now, what is F composition? So, this is F, and this is F inverse. So, that what is F inverse composition F, or F inverse F of X? That will be equal to, okay, you will have A here and A here. So this is going to be a, uh, a function from A to A, right? So here you'll have 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. Here also you'll have 1, 2, 3, 4. If you see, 1 is getting mapped to 1 and 2 is getting mapped to 2, 3 is getting mapped to 3 and 4 is getting mapped to 4, right? So what we know is F inverse composition F of X 
will be equal to x. Okay, fair. Uh, similarly, if you want to compute uh, instead of f inverse f of x, if you compute f composition f inverse of x, again we will be getting. Um, so let's see what it will be. Uh, you will be that this means you have f of f inverse of x, right? f of f inverse of x. So that means um, you are passing f inverse to f, right? So this will be a function from b to b. So this will be a function from b to b. So you have b here and you have b here. Okay, so f inverse of x, you will be giving this uh, input, right? So your input will be a, b, c, d. Okay, right? So a gives 1, right? And 1 gives a. So basically a is getting mapped to a. Similarly, b is mapped to 3 and 3 is mapped to b. So it will be b gives b. Similarly, c gives c and d gives b. Okay, so uh, whatever value you are giving here, the output will be same. So I can say that f of f inverse of x will be again equal to x. Okay, uh, only difference will be uh, here it will be a function from a to a, and here it will be a function from b to b. Hope it is clear. Consider the set of all functions from the set 0 to 2014. To set 0 to 24 such that f of f of i is equal to i. You should note that what we know is f composition f inverse is f inverse of x will be equal to x, right? It is given that uh, f of f of i is equal to i. That means f composition f is equal to f of x is equal to x. Right, so that means this function f and f inverse are actually same. Right, one of these should be f inverse. So here both are f. So one of these should be f inverse. That means um, here uh, the function f and f inverse are same. So that means the function has got an inverse. Right. So that means the function should be one-to-one uh, -one correspondence function. Right. That means the function should be onto and one-to-one. So the choice, uh, the statement R is correct because uh, it says that that type of function should be onto, right? So choice R is true. So if you see this choice is wrong, right? So uh, answer may be A, B, or D. Now let's take an example. See, you should be very careful while taking the example because if you see here. You have 0 to uh, 2014, right? That means you have 2015 numbers. That means it's an odd number. So I have to take odd number here in the example also. So let me take 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Here also 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay. Now I want to prove that these two statements are actually uh, wrong. So first statement says that for each such function, it must be the case that for every i, f of i should be equal to i. f of i should be equal to i. That means 1 should get mapped to 1, 2 should get mapped to 2, 3 should get mapped to 3, 4 should be getting mapped to 4, and 5 should be getting mapped to 5. And I want to um, um, prove that this is wrong. And also here says it says that um, at least one i, at least some i, f of i should be equal to i. Okay, so uh, I will not assign I, f of i is equal to i so that I can get a condition for both statements, right? So let me map 1 to 3. So you should be very clear because if you are mapping 1 to 3, uh, 3 should be mapped to 1 because f is equal to f inverse or, or you can say that you are giving um, f of f of 1, then you should be getting the answer as 1. Right, that means f of 1 you are mapping to 3, that means f of 3 should be equal to 1. Right, so 3 should be mapped to 1. Okay, similarly, if you are mapping uh, 2 to 4, what it means is f of 
f of 2 should be equal to 2, right? That means f of 2 you are mapping to 4, then f of 4 should be equal to 2, right? So that means 4 should be mapped to 2. Now you have um, one element left here and as well as here. Because if you see the odd number, right, you are actually taking a pair of numbers because if you map 1 to 3, 3 should be mapped to 1. So that 1 and 3 are actually a pair now. Similarly, if you are seeing 2 to 4 and 4 to 2, that's also a pair, right. So definitely since you have odd number here, uh, one element will be left here, okay. And the same element will be left here. So you have to connect this. There is no other way. So uh, you cannot contradict the uh, statement Q. For each such function, it must be the case that for some i, f of i should be equal to i. So this is true, but this statement is wrong. So the answer should be b. Let capital R denote the set of real numbers. And you have a function from R cross R to R cross R. And it's a bijective function. The function is defined here. And we are asked to find out the inverse function of f. It's given, it's clear that if you, the, the inverse function exists only if it is a bijective function, right? So the function here is f of x comma y is equal to x plus y comma x minus y. So it takes a pair of inputs and give, uh, output as a pair of output, right? So that means if you have f of 5 comma 3, then the output will be the pair 8 comma 5 minus 3 is 3, right? Now, what should be the inverse function? The inverse function, if you give 8 comma 2 as the input, it should give 5 comma 3 as the output, right? That is the inverse function, right? If you give 8 comma 2 as the input, it should give 5 comma 3 as the inverse, right? Now, it's um, let's see the choice B. Let's see the choice B. So, uh, if you give 8 comma 2, uh, this will be 8 minus 2, right? That will be 6. So, choice B is wrong, right? Uh, it's very clear that choice A is wrong because you are going to get 1 by something. That is, uh, it's not going to be 5 or, 5 or 3. So, choice A is also wrong. Now, if you see here, uh, this is actually going to return. Um, x and y are 8 and 2. So this will be 8 plus 2 divided by 2. That will, that is 5. And this will be 8 minus 2 divided by 2. That is 3. Right. So this function is going to, if I give input as 8 comma 2, the output will be 5 comma 3. Right. Now if you see here, this is saying 2 into x minus y. Right. So that will be 2 into x minus y is 8 minus 2 is 6. So the first value will be 12. So this is also wrong. So the correct option should be C. Let a function f from set A to B. And it's an injective function. Right. So we have a function from A to B. And it is an injective function. So let me assume here you have 1, 2, 3. And here you have A, B, C, D. And some mapping. You just uh, in some mapping. Okay. Now it's a 1 to 1 function. Right. But it's not 1 to um, It's given that it's only 1 to 1 function. So 1 to 1 function should be guaranteed. Okay. Now we define a function g from 2 raised to a to 2 raised to b. Okay. Uh, and if you see the input of c, input of g is the uh, value c that is actually a subset of a. Right. So the function g uh, is taking the subsets. So the function 2 raised to a to 2 raised to b is nothing but uh, all the subsets of a to all the subsets of P. Okay. So I'm not going to write all the subsets here. I will just write some of them. Uh, for example, you'll have five, you'll have one, right? You'll have two, three, then maybe you'll have two, three, right? So etc. Et and here also you'll have 
five. You'll have A. You'll have B. Maybe you'll have. Uh, let me add here two also. Uh, here you, you may have C and B C etc. Right. So you will have eight elements here, and you will have uh, sixteen elements, here, right? Now, what is G of C? Uh, G of C is the set of elements f of x such that x is an element of C. Okay. So, for example, uh, what is G? this is a function G, right? So, what is G of two three? So, I have to give the elements from here. I am just giving two three. So what is g of two three? G of two three will be equal to g of two three will be equal to f of x. X is an element of c, right? So I have to pass f of two. So f of two is actually a. F of two is a, right? And f of three, f of three is c, right? So a c. So basically, uh, two three is connected to b c. So a c, right? So you will have a c here. And two three is connected to this. Okay, so these are the mappings you have in G. Okay, so here is not two three is connected to S. Okay. Now we have another function H that is from two raised to B to two raised to A. Okay, so you have another function H that is from two raised to B to two raised to A. This is the function h, so you will have phi here, right? Then you will have a, b, uh, maybe you will have a c, right? Maybe you will have a b d, right? And right side you will have phi, one, two, etc. Maybe two, three. Okay, now what is H? So let's see what is H of AC. Okay, let's find out H of AC. So what is H of AC? H of AC. So you take an element x. X should be an element of A, and f of x should be an element of D, right? So you take one and see f of one. F of one is B. B is not here. Take two. F of two is a. It is here, so two should be here. And if you take three, f of three is c. C is here, so two. Okay. So what we know is that a c is mapped to two. Okay. So these are the initial definition. So you have function f, you have function g, and you have function h. Which of the following statements are always true? And we have some conditions here. If you see everywhere, we are using g of h of d, right? G of h of d, g of h of d, g of h. Of d. Okay, in all choices, you have g of h. Of d. So let's compute one g of h of d. So g of h of d, right? D is the uh, elements in this set, right? So I can give any set. For example, if I give a comma c, okay. What happens? So this is my d now. So this is my d. D is equal to a comma c. Then h of a comma c. H of a comma c is two three, right? So g of two three. G of two three. G of two three is uh, nothing but a c. So we are getting a c. Okay. So when the input is a c here, we got the output as a, a comma c. Same output we got. So choice A may be true, choice B may be true, right? And okay, let's see. Uh, maybe we have to take an example which actually breaks this condition. Okay. So one thing I know that um, D is map, not map, or D is not an image of any element in A, right? So let's take a, a subset here that involves D and see what happens. So uh, let me take h of h of okay g of h of uh, instead of a c let me take a c t okay this is a valid subset 
right i just involved d because d is not an image of any uh, any element in a right so uh, now my capital d is a comma c comma d a comma c comma d right and h of a c d what is h of a c d h of a c d will be the set of pairs sorry set of elements x such that x is an element of a and f of x is an element of d right so i'll see whether one is there no because b is not here two yes two is there three yes three is there. okay so h of a c d actually maps to two so a c d let me write it a c d is mapped to two three right so g of two three g of two three that is it um that is mapped to ac so what we got is d is equal to acd and g of h of d is equal to a comma c right so now we know that choice b is wrong because G of H of D is greater than, uh, it's a superset of D, that is wrong. A may be right. And if you see the choice C, it says G of H of D intersection D is equal to 5. If I take the intersection of these two, it is not 5. The choice C is also wrong. And choice D says G of H of D intersection. G of H of D is AC. Intersection. B minus D is ACD, so B minus D will be B, right? It is equal to 5, but it says it's not equal to 5, so choice D is wrong. So the correct option should be A. It's given that F is a function from B to C. So I have B here and C here, okay? So this is F. And G is a function from A to B. So G is a function from A to B. So this is G. And H is a function of F composition G, right? What is F composition G? F of G of X, right? That is F composition G, right? So that's a function from uh, g of x is from a to b, right? So f of g of x will be a function from a to c. So you have a function from a to c that is x. Okay, and it is given that h is on to function. H is an on to function. That means if you have uh, one, two, three, four, five here, and you have a, b. C, D here. Every element here is an image of an element in A, right? That is why it is called H is an onto function, right? So, somehow every element is mapped. Somehow every element is an image of A, right? So, uh, maybe I can have some elements here also. So, maybe I can have P. Q, R, S, T. Okay. And uh, I should be able to reach from A to C and all the elements should be mapped. Right. So the only way I can reach from A to C is through B to C. Right. So that means, um, that means every element here should be an image of B. Right. So it should be an image of B, uh, something like this. So I can say that f should be this should be an onto function, onto function, right? Uh, but g, right? G I can have something like uh, one to p, two to q, three to r, and four to s, and five to s, right? So, so now I can, for, for example, 1 to A, I can reach 2 to B, I can reach 3 to C, I can reach 4 to D, 
and 5 to 2, right? Now, if I have a function like this uh, that shows that a to c is on to only if uh, b to uh, c is on to, but a to b may not be on to, right? So it is clear that h should be on to, but g may not be may not be on to, right? So the answer should be b. It is given that f be a function from set a to set b, right? So f is a function from a to b. This is f, and g is a function from b to c. So this is c. This is from b to c, and h is a function from a to c, right? So from a to c, there is a function x. And h of a is equal to g of f of a. So this is actually a composition of function h. Now, which of the following statements are true for all such functions f and c, right? So uh, what we know uh, from the previous question is that if h is on to h is on to, right? Then g must be on. To. G is on. To. Right, so if h is on to that implies g is on to. So the choice c is true. Uh, choice d says h is on to, then f and g are on to that is not needed. Uh, choice b says h is on to, then f is on to this is also not needed. Uh, it says g is on to, so uh, this is on to. Then this one will be on to that is the uh, reverse. If you see, I have let's assume I have one, two, three, four here, and I have a, b, c, d, e here, and I have p, q, r, s here. Let's assume we have something like this. So I can map something like this, right? So now g is on to g is on to right uh, if g is on to it says that then x is on to right that is uh, what the statement a6 right now we have g is on to but f can be something like this now even though g is on to um, x is not on to right because um, h actually maps 1 to p then 2 to q then 3 to q then 4 to r and um, 4 to r, right? So s is uh, not map, uh, s is not an image of any element in A. So x is not on to, g is on to here. So this choice is also wrong. So the correct option is C.